for me, I really want to just tell my stories, uh, inspire people beyond what they what they see, because people, us as humans, we're very resilient and we always can do far beyond what we expect or what we think we can. And when challenged and encouraged, we will surprise ourselves. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We have an amazing guest for you on the Third Shield Pokemon Go PvP podcast. We have the one, the only, Cricket, all the way from Australia, here with us on that podcast. Cricket, welcome to the podcast. Hello, good morning, podcast friends. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have you because I wanted to introduce your energy to this community. If they some for some reason haven't seen you, they have to actually hear and see you. So thank you for coming. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I am super excited. And yes, I am very high energy, big smiles. Maybe adjust your volume just a little bit, turn it down because I get loud. <laughs> and, and, and guys, I really wanted to have Cricket on the podcast for a few reasons. One, it's a really nice break, I think every once in a while to have somebody whose main focus is not PVP and yet still PVPs, but on the other hand, she has lots of other things that she's doing for Pokemon Go. And most of the time she actually features all of the new things coming out. For example, any single event that coming is probably can be found on her YouTube channel, which is obviously LinkedIn guys. So make sure to check her out. But I, I let me put it this way. I think when I first saw you, it was on Twitch. Click on it and I instantly, even if I was like, kind of like out of it, you know, I wasn't feeling it or maybe it was a sad day but instantly my eyes open up and then the smile comes up just because the energy you're bringing to streaming and to your videos so that, that's why i really wanted to have you on to bring that to the people who might not see you yet oh thank you so much yeah i um i'm just so grateful and happy to be doing what i'm doing i love playing games i have this thing uh if there's any basketball fans out here in our community. Uh, I love my Jordans, I love my basketball, I collect sneakers, but I have a Jordan clause. It's the Cricky clause. So I love what I'm doing. I love Pokemon Go, I love Pokemon, I love gaming and sharing it with my community. So every time I sit down and make content or do anything uh, with these games, I, I'm just, I'm loving it. And I want to really share that with you guys. So thank you. I'm so glad that uh, that you can come into my channel and you're like, wow, and get excited and, and uh, enjoy the experience as well. I just want to know how you actually got into uh, video games and streaming and Pokemon of all things. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so fun fact, I'm a geologist. I did geology and geophysics at university. I've also got a master's in OHS. Uh, so I did that. I was a mining and exploration geologist for a while. <laughs> and um, I love adventure. I love exploration. I love being outside and travel and people. I love spending time with people and meeting people and just seeing the world and that industry. Uh, just it didn't fit me and my personality regardless of me loving what I did and have studied it 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 just it just wasn't the right place for me so I left that industry and kind of went on a little journey to find my place and find what I love to do I found myself playing a lot of Pokemon Go and retreating into my games and so me being the storyteller that I am, I've learned over time that I'm a storyteller. I get super excited about a new flavor of ice cream. And then I want to tell everyone about this flavor and really descriptive and be like, oh, you got to try it. And then I'm like, come, come to the ice cream shop. I'll drive, I'll pick you up. So I realized I'm a storyteller. I have a lot of positive energy to share. And through what I've learned in life and a few really big serious events, uh, I was like, you know what? I could really help people and I could really help change the perspective on some things and share some joy through something easy like my Pokemon Go game. So my auntie who has very severe epilepsy, I got her into Pokemon Go before I moved and it was a quality of life thing for her with her epilepsy when she was out in public. To people that aren't aware of epilepsy and how that affects people, it's quite, uh, it's, it's a bit of a shock. 
it's a lot. You're like, oh my God, what's going on over there? So I introduced my auntie to Pokemon Go and I was like, hey, let's play this game as a bit of a distraction. I was also using the game to like, oh, well, you know, uh, whatever's happening in the world, I can retreat into it and I can play it and it's fun and exciting. So when I moved, my auntie didn't have me to play with anymore. And, you know, that combined with all of my life experiences and my desire to connect with people and find my people and tell my stories and share positive energy with the world. I bought myself a little camera. I bought a Canon M50 to get me started with vlogging. I turned it around on myself and I just started talking to it. I started talking to it like I was talking to my auntie and imagining seeing her through the other end and I was explaining how to play the game. I always tell people that come and ask me and, mm -hmm. and play with me in person or ask me questions, your camera is not a camera. Think of who you're actually talking to and who you want to connect with. So for me, my auntie with her epilepsy, um, I, have, I have quite a few people with autism as well that come to my channel and, and connected with me very early on. And they said that, you know, you just the way you play and the way you, I feel like you're talking to me. And yeah, other people with epilepsy as well that have come forward and gone, oh my God, your auntie. And I'm like, yes, my auntie plays this game. And it has really, when she's out in public, it distracts her from the negativity and the stares and the noise of the world. And she can just play the game and, oh, shiny Pokemon. And she wouldn't get that, oh, people are staring at me, that, that oh, you know, that, that uh, what's the feeling? It's, it's almost like, a, like an anxiety, like, oh God, people are staring at me, think quicker. She wouldn't get that anymore. That's awesome. I really like hearing these stories because uh, Shreddy was on our podcast on the, on, the, on the previous episode and he was sharing similar stories to this with the community and who he created the videos for, who he helps and who he connects with the most. So that was just really cool to see that how we can actually help people just by being us on camera, front of the camera. I got it! I got it! I got the shiny Litleo! Oh! Oh, it is! It is! It is! It's my first shiny Terrakion! Oh, shiny! 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 I am a crazy screamer at like, no microphone is safe, headphones are not safe. I get very loud. I'm Every time I am shocked and delighted and I have terrible shiny luck. I am the least shiny person I know. And so every time I get one, even if I've already got it before, I'm like, boom, there it is, you. <laughs> Um, what would be like your favorite shiny if you have to pick? And, and two questions. Do you have that mm -hmm. shiny that's your favorite or, or are you still hunting for that shiny that is your favorite? Okay. Uh, I like all shinies. So I find this question really, really difficult to answer because I love all Pokemon. And if it's sparkly, I am literally the biggest, brightest bird you're ever going to see. If it glitters, I need it. I want it. Get it more on me. Can I please like just glitter me? Um, so favorite shiny, uh, Bulbasaur is my babe. I love Bulbasaur. I've always loved Bulbasaur from the very first anime and I'd never gotten one ever. And it was ridiculous. And my very first shiny Bulbasaur was a week before Bulbasaur Community Day. And I hatched a party hat one left over from New Year's Eve. And I literally did not know what to do. <gasps> oh, sh it's, it's a shiny Bulbasaur. Holy, with a, with a what the, far out. Oh my God. Oh my God, you guys, you guys called it. I'm getting my day. I'm getting my day for my baby, my baby Bulba and look, I hatched one. I hatched my first, my first ever shiny Bulbasaur. Holy fuck, he's got a hat on and look, look, look his butt. Oh my. It took me so long to like, like collect myself. And I was like, oh my God, because I wasn't expecting it. And it had a party hat and I, I Personally, I love costume Pokemon. I think they're amazing and cute and just, it's okay if you guys out there, if the battlers don't want them, I will take them. I will take them off your hands, give them to me. Uh, so the party hat, my Bulbasaur, I know you guys on the podcast can't see this, but I have a Bulbasaur uh, 80 inch plushie on my couch and I put a red party hat on my Bulbasaur because my that was my first one in the game. Uh, so that would definitely be up there in the top top tier favorite shinies but it's but it's missing the sparkles 
uh, look, we can imagine. <laughs> Do you have any other favorites that are coming into the game in Pokemon Go that you're looking out for? Oh my goodness, besides all of them? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I really, really like Stuffle and Beware. And same reasons, Beware is just like, a, I love how Beware is like, rah, cranky, rage out, crazy, hard hitting, great move. Bear, but it looks so cute and pink and fluffy and I love how in the anime it just like powers in and get away and smashes everyone down and then grabs Jesse and James and then jumps off and basically saves them but then it's like oh no I saved you now you will hug me while I sleep and like I, I love the wear and Stuffle is just so cute because it's like a little toy and it's it's like a squeaky little dog toy and it's just like <laughs> It's like, it's just, it's <laughs> I know adorbs. exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, Kamala is another favorite. I actually, I have a koala. I have a koala behind me. Uh, um, I see, yeah. Koalas are kind of really, really important to all Australians. They're endangered. Uh, so, you know, anything koala and raising koala awareness or getting people uh, interested in koalas, for me, I get really uh, excited about and passionate behind because we need to keep these little guys alive. So Kamala's a super cute Pokemon. And I think I'm sensing a theme. I like Kamala as well because uh, there was an episode where Jigglypuff put everybody to sleep and it drew on everybody's face but Kamala was only pretending to be asleep and then Kamala drew on Jigglypuff's face. I think that's how it went. And Kamala pretends to be asleep when it wants to ignore you and then just rolls away. So I guess it's that whole uh, cheeky, I do what I want kind of attitude as well. <laughs> um, so that one's gonna be really awesome. Um, oh goodness, uh, everything. Tapu Koko, Tapu Lele, like, all, all of them, all of them. <laughs> so how, how do you know all the Pokemon, by the way? I got really, really into Pokemon Go. I literally walked like 400 kilometers in the first month that the game came out. And I persevered through all of the, uh, the issues that they were having and all the server issues. I remember like throwing, I think it was a dragon air, a wild dragon air spawned, but it glitched out. And silly me, 80 balls at a dragon air that I was never going to catch, that no one with me was ever going to catch. But we even bought more balls to try and catch it. We were freaking out. We were losing our minds. We're like, oh my God, what is this? We got to get it. None of us got it because it, it, you know, it just didn't, it, Good old 2016 days, those things happened. Um, so from that and coming back and picking up Pokemon Go, I started re-watching back all of the anime series that I miss. And I haven't, there's so many, I haven't seen all of them. There's a few gaps and I haven't played the Nintendo main series games uh, because I never had a Game Boy. I never had a Nintendo, the Switch is the very first game console that I've ever had that's completely mine. And, you know, I'm not borrowing from a friend. Uh, and BDSP was the first main series game that is completely mine where I'm like, no one is playing this story. I need, I'm playing this story. Don't play it and then fill me in. So yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. Uh, I love the anime for the Alola region is a really really good anime and i really enjoy that one and possibly one of my favorites it feels like i think for that region because it like touches on everything you get a bit of transformer vibes you get a bit of guardians of the galaxy you get some power ranger vibes you know they get they get bracelets and they're like our powers combine and then they ride the pokemon and i'm just like holy dooly this is like everything that ever was in the last 20 plus years of cartoons and awesome animes and excitement that yeah so <laughs> so that's kind of uh how i got into it and i really connect uh, the Pokemon that I remember are usually the ones that are protecting the others. Uh, so I really connect to those Pokemon that are super happy and uh, want to protect the other Pokemon from the bad guys and the Pokemon that are cheeky and do the naughty cheeky things. Uh, all of those kind of ones stand out to me. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but a question that I have again for you is with the words coming in, with the new events back again, uh, how do you feel about the future uh, for this game and your involvement in it? Ooh, big, Sorry, it's a long, boom, long question. <laughs> big questions. It is a big question. Um, okay, so the future of the game. For me, and, and where you see yourself in that future. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, that, that's okay. Um, I, I really hope, like, uh, COVID was a really big thing. It's basically like, so start of 2020, because I had, I had a whole year of travel booked for 2020. I'd saved up and I was like, I'm coming. I'm going to travel, see things and share it with the world, especially my auntie who very rarely leaves her house. She needs a full-time carer. So I'm like, Hey, I'll just go and explore places and share it with you. She's not going to be able to fly to Japan or to New Zealand or things like that. That's unfortunately not an option for her. Um, but that doesn't mean she doesn't enjoy watching her niece go and experience it and share and show her things. So that 2020 was going to be a massive travel year for me. So many people that I wanted to meet and spend time with, and then it didn't happen. Now we're in 2022. We're currently in February. Australia itself has just opened up. So this year, we're finally at a place where travel and getting back outside and spending time with people and having positive experiences is a lot, lot closer and a lot more realistic. Now we have to uh, slowly reintegrate and give space and time and respect to those that have just gone, holy dooly, I've been home for two years and help people feel more comfortable coming back outside. So with that in the future of Pokemon Go, uh, Pokemon Go has really ramped up, get outside. Get outside, it's time. Come on, off your butts, get outside. Bring back walking distance for PVP. <laughs> so everything I do with my content creation, especially with Pokemon Go, I think about my Arnie situation and how that is impacting her. So that concerns me that there wasn't an option for the NPCs because I know 100% she would not have completed her research tasks for that day because she's in a wheelchair. She needs a full-time carer to take her outside. Uh, she No, that, that wouldn't have happened. So I would like to see some integration uh, with, with, with including people that cannot, for whatever reason, uh, can't leave their location and explore to help them still be included and participate in this wonderful community that they found through COVID and through the pandemic that they found in the people and not drop those friendships that they've made. So something, Johto to again, something that they could have done right up front. So if you remember the uh, storyline, uh, the professor asked us to pick our Pokemon, pick which starter you wanted. Now, at that point, the professor could have asked us uh, you're about to embark on an epic journey and this is your journey and your experience, trainer. How would you like to proceed? Would you like to be battle focused and explore the Johto tour through battling or would you like to proceed catching focused? So we had that option, you know, several quests down, move that right up front, make that the first choice, and then design the experiences of the game around the people that can play outside. And they're like, if I, like being outside, I'm like, I'm outside. I love to catch, I'm a shiny hunter, but yeah, let's check out this battle option because I'm outside. So if I have to go to stops and I have to hunt down battle tasks or things like that, I am able to do that. Whereas people that are like, I've got my kids here, or, you know, little Timmy is sick. I need to look after my kids, my aunt, whatever it is, or I have to work. I have to stay in one location. I can't be out driving, exploring, whatever the situation is. I want to design my experience around catching focus and play on incense and then progress through the, okay, cool, have a little, another, uh, instead of doing in the, all the NPC battles, we could have had catch 25 Pokemon, now catch 50, now catch and evolve, whatever number. And I feel like that would be a more community-wide, uh, inclusive experience. So future of the game and my place in it. Um, I really would like, 
I personally want to travel and I have the ability and that is a desire and pretty much like a life goal for me. I really want to go to TwitchCon in Amsterdam. I really want to go to San Diego TwitchCon. Uh, I want to check out where else the Safari Zones and the GoFests are because I want to be there in person. And for me, the ticket and the Pokemon Go is secondary to the experience and the positive connections and memories that I can make with the people in person. If I don't get a shiny Pokemon, whatever, I don't get it. <laughs> Fun fact, Cricket never gets the shiny Pokemon. Boo, like, you know, it as is tradition. But the experiences that I make with the people in person and sharing, uh, like my Johto tour, Tim, he got a shiny Enti that he couldn't catch. And it like, he and I, we were like, oh no, can you get it? Oh, it jumped out again. Like that, that two minutes is, was the craziest highlight of the day. Uh, Tim and I were like, nah, nah. He was like, okay, I'll try and do it. And he was nervous. And I was like, come on, man, you can do it. It's gonna stay, catch, catch, catch. Other friends that were with us were like, nah, you've lost it. Nah, it's gonna jump out. Oh, that's gone. And just that whole experience of I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And we go, oh, no, no, go again. It hasn't run, oh, it, it hasn't run, run. Didn't run, it didn't run. Go again, oh my God, <laughs> this is crazy. A shiny on incense. Come on, you can do it, stay. Oh. Terrible throw. It doesn't matter. As long as it gets in the ball. Shaggy, shaggy. Shaggy, shaggy. Um, oh, no! Go again. Didn't run away again. <laughs> nah, it's still there. It's still oh, there. Oh, gosh. The it? It's an Entei on incense. Entei. Yeah. yeah. It's going to run for sure. No! I reckon. <gasps> it's jumped out three times. This is crazy! <laughs> Come on! Oh my goodness. I don't know if I can take this. Come on, stay. Stay. Two. Stay in the ball. Oh. <gasps> it's staying in the ball! Yeah! That's crazy. That that is so memorable and exciting. And that's what that's what this playing games and the community is about. Making those moments and sharing those and then telling them with your friends and having that forever beyond the the game and beyond the shiny Pokemon and beyond when Pokemon Go leaves, continues, whatever. I have made some amazing friendships that uh, are more genuine and more heartfelt in the Pokemon Go community than I have in any other thing I've done in my life. And as I said earlier, uh, I have university, geologist, natural therapist. I have done quite a few things in my life and been in quite a few different kind of social circles. I've volunteered uh, for most of my life in lots of different places, lots of animal shelters I've volunteered in, uh, nursing homes. The nursing homes, I made some really great connections as well, uh, reading stories to the elderly and just, just in general talking and, and visiting uh, residents there. But uh, the Pokemon Go community, I'm not gonna text one of the residents in the nursing home, be like, hey, what's up? But I can with people that I've met in the Pokemon Go community. Yeah, so I get a bit passionate because my community is very much focused on positive psychology and the positives and how you can make your life and your experience of your life better and not dwelling on the negatives. If you don't get a Shundo, who cares? I don't have a Shundo. I've never caught a Shundo. When I get the first Shundo, I'll be like, oh, that's crazy. But I don't have any and it doesn't matter. My value is not uh, your value, a player's value is not determined by how many shundos you have, how many raids you've done, how much stardust you've done. Because really, me playing my game doesn't affect anybody else's game. So it's just it's just you and your thing and, and it's more about the people you play with. So I hope that this game continues to progress with us with with society uh, continues to be inclusive they've done some really wonderful things uh throughout I, i've been playing pokemon go since the day it came out and they they're a company that does care and donate to charity and do things like that i hope that they continue to push the boundaries and connect with people outside of themselves and listen uh to other people for those ideas like do you want a catching experience or a battle experience for your ticketed event? For me, I really want to just tell my stories, uh, inspire people beyond what they what they see because people, us as humans, we're very resilient and we always 
can do far beyond what we expect or what we think we can. And when challenged and encouraged, we will surprise ourselves. So keep bringing my flavor uh, of content to that, uh, doing my YouTube, doing my Twitch. Um, you know, there are other things that I would like to develop and grow as a content creator for my own personal business, but I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna play Pokemon Go. I, I've never stopped playing Pokemon Go through all the things that have happened. I continued to play because I wanted to create a safe space in my community for those that wanted to play. So uh, yeah, there could be many, many years ahead of us and inspiring the new generations to come, play, walk, get fit, explore the world, all of those things. Oh, it's, um, it's something that I was like, it came across, I think I saw it on Twitter and I was like, oh, esports. And then I was like, oh, oh, I hope they fix this because, okay, because I, my first thought was, oh, people are going to start betting on Pokemon PvP. And I was like, oh, that's a dangerous, that's a dangerous concept and a slippery slope because it's not like, <laughs> I know, I know before, look, let's just, every word, let's say the world is perfect. It's not like footy where one team wins or basketball, you know, a sport where you have a, a clear winner. I know players sometimes throw games and stuff, but with the PVP, there's a lot of extra external factors and the game itself still needs some development and improvements before it goes to a point where people are gonna start betting on it, which as soon as it's an eSport, you can. I mean, only if Kayla Peng would play or King Ivy or stuff like that, I would be like, I'm there, here's my money, take it, please. That would be me for, for. <laughs> but it's. I understand exactly how bad it could be and will be and all that. So, and there will be addicts, uh, including probably yes. myself for a little bit that would be just go down, just like playing Go Battle League, you would you could go down the rabbit hole of losing constantly and you just want to do it more because you think you're going to win the next one and you just won't because you're in a bad place. It, exactly, exactly. So I really hope that there are people in positions of decision-making power that are considering all of this and considering, you know, everyone that may possibly do that because if you're going to develop a product or you're going to open something up you're also opening yourself up to other issues and we don't need any more issues in our community um as far as esports goes look i am not a, a serious battler i know lots of really amazing wonderful coaches and serious battlers and i like i would love to get better i have quite a wide selection of Pokemon for PvP, should I choose to do more of it? And I don't, I'm not bad at PvP. Um, I am, I'm a tap tap chatter, but not what you think. I actually play, I don't run a charm team. Charm teams are amazing. I love my fairies, but uh, I tap and I chat while I'm doing it, as in I'm an interactive battler. Uh, you, I cannot battle without the sound effects, okay? 100%. Shout out to all my battle friends that are like, pew, 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 whoosh, 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 Hadouken, because that's my flavor and I'm right there with you. Hadouken them every time with those charge moves. Um, <laughs> so if I actually played PVP and invested more time into it, I'd probably go all right and I'd probably, get a lot better at it for me personally and the reason uh, so i don't pvp because it's frustrating and it has a lot of uh like issues and then i found out there was like a way you could cheat with airplay mode and all of that stuff puts me off the frustrations the glitches the people cheating i'm just like it's a game you don't have to be a boss b in pokemon go because it's a game so that energy is not not my energy, so I, I, I don't put enough in the PvP. Was what I'm saying, but I could, you know, if I tried a little harder. Um, so the the worlds and stuff, it's super exciting. I'm really glad that people that do put that energy in and do enjoy PvP are getting a world stage and are getting an esports. Um, I just really want to hope and impart that you all be nice to each other while you do it. So 
Um, it's Pokemon, it's supposed to be enjoyed. It's a game that could turn off at any point. You, you don't know, they, things things happen around, they turned off Harry Potter. So could have, unlikely, but don't, your value and your worth is so much more than your battle rank or your PVP. So don't let that overtake you, just enjoy the journey and, and get involved. Um, I'd be I'd be keen. I think now with the esports coming out as well, I'd be keen to do a bit more and battle a bit more and probably try a little harder. And I think my silliness might be a good distraction weapon against any opponents because you know the <laughs> they say have a poker face. Well, I have the cricket effect. So try battling against that and see how you go. <laughs> I can yeah I can totally see that especially on a live stage it would have been pretty pretty amazing <laughs>
I've got Instagram if you want to see more of my sneakers and my sneaker collection. Uh, my own Discord. I have all the socials. Um, Patreon for super supporters that want to do voice chats, play games after streams. Uh, I spend a lot of time. I create. I'm a full-time content creator, and I do a lot of stuff every day. So, yeah. <laughs> Look, random random streams. Whenever you gotta you gotta either watch Twitter or Instagram or have your notifications on because the ones that are booked in are booked in, and then could be any time. <laughs> Outside of that. Yeah. But thank you for that. And then is there anything else you would like to share before we wrap it up? Uh, or like anything you want to share about you or to the community or anything whatsoever? Uh, Pokemon Go is really at the heart of what we do. So the biggest thing to remember and the biggest thing to do is to just play the game, uh, play it the best you can with who you have with you in the time that you have got and enjoy that. Enjoy the experience in the moment. Don't let yourself get caught up with shinies or shundos or hundos or get jealous about what somebody else has. You can't control any of that, but you can control how you react to whatever is happening around you. And if you choose to take it in a more positive, more grateful approach, you'll have a much, much more improved and meaningful experience, not just in your gameplay, but in your life overall. So with Pokemon Go, with all of your games specifically, play the game the best you can with who you have with you, enjoying it with them in the time that you have got. And she be golden, baby. She be golden. <laughs> and of course, come spend some time with me and Daniel. Come, yes. come and hang out with us. <laughs> we'll, we'll remind you. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, and and guys, make sure you you know you take action. Well, everything I feel like everything that you shared and the way you actually uh, present yourself and your streams and your videos, anybody who feels a little bit down or against the game or molding or whatever it is, if they just go uh, stumble up on your channel, then all of a sudden they're gonna leave with a smile on their face. So I'm very happy that you know we were able to connect you with the community who might not have actually seen you just yet, but now they definitely have to and will see you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. I love what you do and I love the way uh, you make content. I'm super excited to get you more in more of my Community Day Around the World videos. Like I love, I love it. I love everything you do. So yes, please come through. Make sure that you uh, guys are following Daniel and checking out his streams. They are awesome. He's lots of fun and high energy as well. So. Thank but you so you much. already know that if you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might not. They might come from somewhere else. You, know, you never know. But, uh, yep. but yeah, but thank you so much. <laughs> and guys, don't forget, all the links for Cricket are down below. So make sure to click on her, give her a follow or like. Depends where you are. All sub on YouTube or Twitch. It's up to you. Uh, it will be awesome. And guys, thank you so much for listening and watching. <laughs>